on today's episode. So folks that have been watching my channel for any length of time will recognize this guy. It's my go-to hot air gun and uh, with a range of nozzles it's suitable for, for, for many types of jobs from reflowing BGAs on old playstations or what have you to, to, sur to surface mount, for loosening screens on, uh, on, on tablets and all sorts of things. But I have an upcoming project where I need, uh, I need more, uh, don't we all? Um, the project involves uh, a Bluetooth speaker project and what I need to do is to form some PVC pipe which is sort of uh, at least uh, five inches across and I'll, I need to mould it. For that we're going to need more heat. And enter this guy. So uh, obviously it's a well used uh, item. So at some point it was functioning but uh, right now it isn't. So I managed to pick this up in a local uh, second-hand Emporium uh, but I plug it in and, and uh, there's no life whatsoever. So uh, let's get inside and uh, see if we can rescue this guy. Now there's a little twist to getting this guy apart, having removed the screws. This part at the front you actually have to get uh, with a fairly meaty screwdriver in between the housing and this part here and to get that off there are a couple of uh, detentes uh, that are holding that guy on and until that is removed you cannot get the thing apart. But now we can see it in, uh, in all its glory. So the first thing I want to check is that there's continuity between the, the power and the, the cables here. It could be a, a problem with the, the, the cable here. Obviously it's a well used item so the, the cable could be broken or indeed the fuse. I've already checked the fuse, so that's good. Uh, so from the neutral side, yep, no problem. And the live side, yep, there's no problems there. So the the issue lies elsewhere. Let's investigate further. So in the guts of this thing is a fairly sophisticated um, circuit. It looks like a little microcontroller down there. And I do notice that next to it, um, this resistor here is, is obviously burned out. Uh, it's suffered extreme stress. So we need to discover if we can what, uh, what component value that is and, um, and get it changed out. So what? we're going to need to do is to remove this circuit board so that we can investigate it further. Now um, there are obviously various cables so we need to make, a, make ourselves a diagram and uh, to release these two which are covered in um, in hot melt glue. Um, my preferred weapon of choice is an old, and I stress old, pair of, of side cutters. They're nicely blunt but uh, if we carefully get under the under there then we can remove these without uh, too much problem. So the resistor we can clearly see is, is, is burned and if we measure across it we're getting half, uh, half a meg ohm. Now looking at the device we can see um, the remains of what appears to be one mauve band, one black band so that would be seven zero and just about underneath the the burned region can just about make out a yellow so i would say that was four seven zero uh, or 47 ohms uh, but clearly half a meg is <laughs> is it, the thing is completely burned out and we'll have to investigate the mark on this capacitor as well uh, in case it's in fact arced over to to that so here we've removed the resistor from the board and cleaned the board up. Uh, the mark that was on the capacitor was just uh, superficial, so that's all cleaned up okay. And if we look now underneath the resistor, we can clearly see that the, the band there is, is yellow. So as suspected, it's yellow, violet and black, which is 47 ohms. And looking at the size, this is all I guess by the, the tracking of the burn mark we can uh, we can uh, make out that it's a wire wound device probably two watts possibly three so that's what we need to find 
Obviously the other question is, has it trashed any other devices on the board? Now I've done some quick tests. Um, there's a, a, bridge, a bridge rectifier, these four diodes here, which appears to be driving the motor via this transistor. They all check out okay. But I am suspicious of this guy. Now this is a, a, this is a triac. And we can't really test that um, in, in circuit, so I'm going to take that out and uh, put it on the component tester. So I've removed the triac from the circuit to, to test it. And on these little guys, uh, on the side here, the first two pins are, are effectively the, the, the anodes, and the gate is on this side. So if we test across these two uh, with no, nothing on the, on the gate, then we should see a high resistance. So there we are, 16 megs. Now if we short the gate to uh, one of the other connections, uh, we can see that the resistance drops right down to uh, just over 82 ohms. And if we remove that, we get the high resistance again. Now that should work uh, in the other direction as it, obviously it's a triac so it's symmetrical. So if we put the these leads around the other way we get a high resistance and again if we short the gate we get the low resistance. So um, this guy is good. It hasn't uh, hasn't been been blown by the the other damage. Now back in the day, if I'd used my my old trusty Avo, um, once you'd set the uh, the, the gate, um, because the voltage across from a, from an Avo was something like 15 volts, um, then that low resistance would 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 stay even once you'd removed the uh, removed the short, but um, these guys work slightly differently. But I'm quite confident that the triac is good. So the next challenge is to find a replacement for this guy, and as we saw, it's got a gold band at the ends, which means it's five percent. So we're looking for something 47 ohms within five percent. Now on this old PC power supply. I have one here, green, black, black, which uh, is 50 ohms. So if we just give that uh, a quick measure. Yeah, so 50 ohms uh, is within as near as damn it 5% of, of 47, and it's the right sort of wattage. So I think we'll pop that guy in and see, uh, see where we go from there. So I've reconnected all the wires using my handy diagram which I made. I know we're filming this anyway but uh, belt and braces. So I've got this plugged into uh, an RCD trip just in case things go badly wrong. Let's see what happens. So it's making a healthy sort of noise and you can see the, the settings on the back there. So let's get this reassembled properly and uh, give it a thorough test. So here with the unit fully assembled we're going to test out the various uh, functions. So we switch it on. In this mode, in position 1, the temperature is fixed to 50 but you can adjust the, the fan. If you switch it up to position 2 now you can change the temperature as well. So we've got the up and down functions for the temperature and once again for the fan as well. So there we are. I I fixed it. Um, there is a this is a, a UK model this Aerolex but there is a, a Chinese version of it. I'm sure it's manufactured in, in, in China. Um, so in conclusion uh, I bought this um, for, for five euros and I think it was a worthwhile investment, plus I've had the additional fund of, uh, of fixing it.